Well, I have the same <clears throat> question, basically, that Justice Kagan just asked you. Your response in your reply brief was an answer to a, an argument that was made by the respondents on page 24 of their brief, where they say, if the Bureau is correct that there is no constitutional limit on Congress's power to pass laws providing funding to agencies, then a single Congress could allocate each year forever up to a trillion dollars to an agency like the FBI or FTC, <clears throat> or even up to a quadrillion dollars for the President to fund as he deems fit the entire federal government besides the Army. Now, you answered the latter part of that in your reply brief about the quadrillion dollars, and you just answered that in response to Justice Kagan. You didn't answer the first part of that about providing a very substantial sum of money to an agency like the FBI or the FTC. So I, I just want to understand what you think the limiting principle is. Let's take um, — Let's take the FTC, which I think had a budget of $430 million. So let's say there's a law that allocates forever one, up to $1 billion adjusted for inflation to the FTC to use as the uh, FTC seems fit. Would that be consistent with the Appropriations Clause? So I think at the outset, if the law said however the FTC deems fit, it's not clear that would count as an appropriation because it's not clear Congress would have specified the purpose. But I recognize you can tweak it and say, you know, to carry out the FTC's functions. In that context, I think the hypothetical would effectively be a standing uncapped appropriation because, of course, the FTC would never reach that amount. It would be for a single agency, and we think that that is well-grounded in history and, in fact, is how many agencies are funded today, particularly in the financial regulatory space. But if you have concerns about that principle, here, of course, we have the statutory cap. And respondents say, you know, the cap is illusory, that it's more like the hypotheticals we've just been touching on. But I don't see how they can tenably make that argument when the cap is set at $600 million, adjusted only for inflation, and many of the agencies from which the CFPB inherited its, its responsibilities have far larger budgets, $1.8 billion for the OCC, around a billion for the Federal Reserve Board, over a billion for the FDIC. This is a meaningful restraint, and I think it just demonstrates that if the court thinks it's important to have that constraint here, the CFPB is even more under Congress's control than these other agencies. Can I ask, okay. <clears throat> could I just sure. <clears throat> excuse me, ask one follow-up question on that? So I understand your answer to these mm. hypotheticals is that we must look to Congress's historical practices. This is a matter of, of seeing whether the setup that we have before us is consistent with Congress's historical practices. <coughs> is that right? We draw heavily on historical practices, also is text, that, of course. I don't test? want to lose sight is that of that. The test? Is it the test? I think that the, the test in this context, as in most separation of powers cases, is yes, text and history. And here again, we have a specific con constitutional provision speaking to duration, uh, speaking to particular types of functions, showing that the framers were concerned about funding the Army with a standing appropriation, but didn't have that same concern or effort to restrict Congress's authority with respect to other functions. And then we have an unbroken line of history. There have been agencies funded this way for every year well, of Well, what is history. your best historic, your single best example of an agency that has all of the features that the CFPB uh, has that are cited by the respondents. The single best example of an agency with all of the, with that combination of features. I think our best example historically is the Customs Service. Uh, the first Congress created the Customs Service in 1789. It gave the Customs Service a standing uncapped source of funding from the revenues that the Customs Service collected through things including coercive law enforcement activity, things like levying fines, uh, also from import duties, which could not be avoided if you wanted to engage in trade with the new nation. And the Customs Service was one of the most powerful agencies that was originally created because it was so important to have a stream of funding for the new republic. So I think that if you look through all of the factors that are challenging here, we have the Customs Service and others, the revenue officers, U.S. attorneys for a period of time were funded through conviction. Fees. What is your best example of an agency that draws its money from another agency that in turn does not 
get its money from a congressional appropriation in the normal sense of that term, but gets it from the private sector. So I, I can't give you another example of a source that's precisely like that one, but I would dispute the premise that that could possibly be constitutionally relevant. This is a case about Congress's own prerogatives over the purse, its authority. And if Congress has given away too much of its authority by not providing for a durational limit or not providing or providing for too much discretion to the agency, then I don't see how it could possibly fix the problem that other fee-funded agencies directly co collect their money from the entities they regulate. So uh, I take it your answer is that you do not, that is not consistent with any historical practice, but you think that to the extent it is unprecedented, it is unprecedented in a way that is not relevant for present purposes. Is that your answer? Yes, primarily. I think it'd be unprecedented in the way that you could say this is the only agency that has the acronym CFPB. That's obviously true also, but it doesn't track the constitutional value. But I also just want to make the factual point that I don't understand them to be saying it's significant that it's structured this way in the abstract. They say what it means is that there's not a check on the overall amount of funding the CFPB could get, and there is a check on those other agencies. And that's wrong as a descriptive matter. There is no similar check on the Federal Reserve Board, the FDIC, the NCUA, the FCA, or the FHFA, all of the entities they regulate cannot enter their, or I'm sorry, exit their regulatory sphere just because they disagree with regulation. So this Thank just you, isn't counsel. a tenable distinction on the facts. Justice Thomas, anything further? Salido? Just a couple more questions, possibly. Um, Is, I think you may have answered this indirectly, but I just want to be, be clear. Do you think that the reference to appropriations in the Constitution uh, is equivalent to public money? Do you think appropriated funds are the same thing as, quote, unquote, public money? So I think that funds that Congress has given to an agency do qualify as public money, yes. What if... Uh, Someone, what if Congress set up an agency with substantial power but provided no method for that agency to obtain money other than private donations? Would that be consistent with the Appropriations Clause? I think that likely would be consistent. You know, that obviously speaks to the question of source, and I think that Congress has chosen different sources over time, but I don't think there's anything in the text of the Constitution that limits Congress's ability to try to determine the ways it wants to structure those kinds of funding mechanisms. So suppose Congress said um, there are a lot of outside entities that have a great interest in the work of the SEC, so we don't think we need to appropriate any money for the SEC. The SEC can simply rely on private donations and build up its own endowment, so to speak. Would that be constitutional? I think that it likely would qualify as constitutional. Of course, if that created some kind of regulatory capture, I would expect that Congress would act to fix that. But, you know, there are examples for uh, throughout our history of scholarship funds, for example, that are administered by the federal government, originally funded by an endowment, and those, I think, qualify as appropriations. 